also I want to introduce some uh, uh, kind of three form uh, uh, to de define this uh, uh, corresponding field of strength for the uh, 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 for this uh, transform gauge field. Uh, just uh, uh, for convention, because uh, uh, once we define such kind of things, it's kind of like a maximum term for this uh, uh, two form gauge field that you can write out. So basically, the first piece just uh, the maximum term. And this uh, second piece, basically, is just uh, this uh, two-form gauge field coupled to this uh, uh, vortex line current. Then it's a due description for this three-dimensional superfluid. And uh, you can uh, show that actually this maximum term uh, for two-form gauge field corresponding to the lowest mode in the original XY model. So this is a due de description. And uh, from here, we can think about uh, 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 in the superfluid phase, uh, uh, we just uh, focus on one particular symmetry operation vacuum. But uh, in general, we can think about uh, we also sum over this vortex line configuration. Basically, you can you can assume there's some dynamics uh, for this uh, vortex current, vortex line current, sigma mu nu. And uh, uh, once you sum over those dynamics, uh, there's a way to derive this non-trivial multi-insulator phase. But uh, unfortunately, if you want to sum over this uh, 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 kind of uh, dynamics for this uh, water line, uh, uh, there's no way to avoid uh, this uh, string theory. But uh, I don't want to go to the detail for string theory. But uh, uh, I just uh, want to uh, show you that uh, 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 there are some previous results have already uh, done uh, to derive the effective action for this uh, water line con condensate. Um, so the idea is that uh, uh, very similar to this uh, uh, single particle con condensate. Uh, if we think about the what has the con condensate, it's just uh, like a particle. So we, we know how to condense the vortex. But if we want to condense the vortex line, basically it's like a string, but it's not a fundamental string. So you can just define it in 3 plus 1, not in 26 dimension, because there's no issue for anomaly cancellation. Uh, and then you can just introduce some other parameters like this. So this phi zero is like the amplitude of this. So it's just like the rigidity of the uh, a particle condensate. And this x mu, originally uh, its definition is it's the kind of water sheet coordinate. But you can later you can just in interpret it as the usual coordinate after what has line condensate. And the theta mu is just uh, some field. Uh, it's like the phase of this uh, what, what has line condensate. Uh, okay. So uh, the result is that uh, once you consider such kind of uh, uh, what has line condensate state, uh, you end up with the uh, Higgs phase of d mu nu. So uh, the final result turns out to be trivial. Uh, uh, not trivial, but uh, simple. It's just a uh, Higgs phase, because this d mu nu, originally, think about uh, it's a couple to this uh, uh, what has line current. And uh, actually, you can just uh, starting from this uh, usual uh, nambu goto action, and uh, considering dynamics of the d mu nu. And uh, you treat the d mu nu as a dynamic field instead of background field. And then you can consider what has line condensation, and you end up with the Higgs phase for this uh, two-form gauge field. And another claim is that the Higgs phase for this two-form gauge field actually describes the usual multi-insulator state. So this is very easy to see, uh, because uh, uh, you can just, uh, again, do this trick, uh, like a, a hubble strano transformation. You decouple this square term, and you introduce this uh, notation sigma mu nu. And again, you integrate out this uh, fluctuation of this uh, uh, vector field. And uh, you can introduce a constraint. And uh, you solve this constraint, you end up with a DF test. So, so it's uh, uh, pretty similar as the uh, previous uh, description. So here, this is uh, the solver. Once you solve this, uh, once you define this sigma menu in this way, you can find it to satisfy the constraint that the partial mu uh, sigma menu is equal to zero. So this is the solver. So you want to, you just put this in. You can find the first leading order contribution is a BF term. But also there are a kind of couple to matter field and also a Maxwell term. But in the long wavelengths, we can just ignore all these Maxwell terms. So LH is the usual um, uh, original Maxwell term for the um, two-form gauge field. But uh, here it's clear because in a water phase, there's nothing at low energy. It's a complete gap phase, right? So we can it's reasonable to ignore all these kind of maximum terms. So you, you just uh, focus on this uh, um, uh, uh, topological term, the BF term. And uh, even this uh, uh, current coupling is not important, because in the bulk, there's no 
what has no charge in the ground state. There's basically nothing. It's almost just a, some some fancy description for a completely trivial state. Because we know how to write down the ground wave function for a uh, Martin grid. It's just a product state. You just have one both on each side, which is completely trivial. But in this kind of fancy language, you end up with some topological field theory. But also, it's a trivial one because you can easily show there's nothing on the boundary. Okay, so so now the purpose is that uh, how can we uh, make it uh, non-trivial? Just like the, our story in uh, two plus one d, we just attach some integer spin on the word hex. Then we claim we connect this word hex. It uh, turns out to be non-trivial, and it, it's actually it's a DTI base. So here we want to play a similar game uh, to this kind of a trivial BF theory. Um, <coughs> So uh, yeah, here I just mentioned in some notation people use this differential form, there's a factor of two. So here it's a one over four pi, but in differential form, because D is two form, so uh, uh, it's important to have a factor of two, because uh, this quantization coefficient is important. It will determine the ground state of degeneracy. Uh, I will discuss it later. Because in uh, many uh, uh, different works, I find this notation really confusing. And spend some time to figure out that uh, if you use differential form, you, there's a factor of two. Yeah. Okay, so the idea is that uh, first we want to add in some uh, non-trivial linking better phase terms. So uh, uh, kind of we imagine that uh, we're starting from the number go to action, the string action, but we commence the, uh, what, what has line. We commence the string, and then we end up with some Higgs phase of this uh, two-form gauge field. But uh, on the other hand, uh, we allow to add uh, some additional barrier phase term. For example, uh, such kind of barrier phase term could be interesting because uh, it's also um, topological invariant. Um, <coughs> in the sense, it's a topological term because in imaginary time, it's purely imaginary. It's not a real term in imaginary time. It's not, not just a weight, weight of, it's not just a Boltzmann weight it's compared to this term. Uh, so if we assume that uh, 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 there could be such kind of non-trivial uh, linking barrier phase term. So uh, uh, the reason we call it linking barrier phase is because uh, the physical process is just like this. We have two strings. And uh, then uh, origin, originally they are kind of uh, uh, far from each other. Then we, at some point, uh, t, uh, they become to cross. And in the end, they become linking. And the point is that uh, in, in the, uh, in the Final configuration and original configuration, there could be a different uh, uh, phase uh, for this kind of uh, uh, configuration, string configuration. So, which will be contributed by this linking barrier phase. So, so that's the origin of its name. Uh, and if we add a such kind of term, we can uh, play with the uh, uh, same game uh, as we did uh, before. We again, we can introduce this uh, uh, Hubble string knowledge field. Now I call it, uh, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this notation, <laughs> but anyway, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let me call it sigma. <laughs> sigma mu nu, yeah, okay. Cosine, oh, okay, okay, cosine mu nu, yeah, so uh, well, once I decouple this term, then uh, it's, uh, I also added this uh, square term. Uh, but, uh, uh, um, on the other hand, I will have some additional contribution, actually, from, from this linking barrier phase term. So here, I have already expressed it in, uh, into two pieces. Because once I introduce this uh, decoupling field, um, yeah, so if I integral out this cosine mu nu, uh, this is quadratic term, I reproduce this Higgs term. But uh, in addition to that, I have this kind of contribution. But there's also a Maxwell term. So here, all, all these terms, you can see, they, they, they basically match. Uh, then the uh, uh, game is uh, 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 actually also simple. You just want to integral this, uh, uh, this kind of uh, smooth fluctuation of the uh, phase of the what has line. And you want to, uh, once you integral this out, you also introduce a constraint. But now this constraint is slightly modified. It's not just a partial mu or cosine mu mu equal to zero. You have this additional shift because uh, you're adding this term here. Uh, sorry, uh, physical meaning of that term, sorry, it's a, it's a linking in real space or it's 
space-time. Uh, it's in space-time. But that's, I mean, the vortex, the three-dimensional vortex line is a line in 3D space. If you, space-time is going to be some kind of very membrane or some yeah, yeah, yes. In, 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 if you take this uh, uh, space time picture, it's just uh, like a water sheet. So the water sheet has some uh, intersection. Intersection between water sheet. Yeah, yeah. But, but here, just uh, some. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I don't plot this time direction. So you physically, you can think of this kind of things move. But if you write down this trajectory, it's actually corresponding to this water sheet. Yeah, that, that looks like creating the. So, so, so where is the time direction again? Oh, here there's no time direction. You just think about uh, this uh, uh, four configuration there at different uh, for different time. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. I think that probably corresponds to this uh, two dimensional subspace to the four dimensional space time, and they intersect at one point. Uh, well, that, I mean, that looks to me that uh, he's creating a link. Okay, so yeah, actually I don't know how to draw this uh, figure more precise because the four dimension is very hard to draw, but uh, anyway, yeah. So here just uh, some cartoon to, to, to show the meaning of this. Uh, okay, so if you compare to uh, the previous kind of calculation, you find that uh, uh, this uh, uh, original constraint, just this uh, partial mu cos mu, mu, mu vanish, but uh, here we have this additional shift. But you can, again, you can solve it. Uh, and uh, uh, once you solve it, you just uh, find that there's additional contribution here, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, kind of uh, in terms of this two-point distribution. There's no derivative here. Okay, then you just uh, plug in this uh, uh, back to the original Lagrangian, and you will see that uh, uh, that you can uh, actually uh, end up with something very nice uh, after you uh, ignore this uh, all these Maxwell term, this LH and this. Uh, um, yeah, this uh, geometric term, this cosine square term, uh, and this this is uh, some kind of uh, uh, sometimes people call the BF term with the additional cos cosmology uh, cosmological constant term, uh, because in this loop of quantum gravity it is corresponding to this to this uh, uh, cosmological constant. Um, so uh, at the first glancing, it looks like a, a strange because. Uh, uh, the BF term is naturally it's invariant term to this gauge transformation of one form and two form. But it, with this additional contribution, uh, this whole action is kind of topologic invariant. But it, it looks like not gauge invariant. So it's uh, kind of like uh, very strange because uh, you perform the gauge transformation for this one form gauge field is uh, invariant. But if you <coughs> perform the normal gauge transformation for this two form gauge field, <laughs> there are some additional things that uh, happen here. It's not a really gauge invariant. So what happened? Uh, but uh, uh, originally, we know that this Lagrangian actually it is gauge invariant because uh, 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 here you can just uh, uh, do gauge transformation for this B mu nu, but you, you can co have corresponding gauge transformation for this theta field. So there's nothing break gauge invariant. So this looks like very strange. But uh, actually, it turns out that with this additional term, the usual definition of gauge transformation uh, is incorrect. Actually, we need to modify the gauge transformation. And the way to modify is that. Uh, the B mu nu is transformed in a normal way, but it's A mu because it's like a Lagrangian multiple fields we introduce in the uh, form of calculation. So in principle, actually we don't know how to transform on the gauge transformation. Uh, that's the reason if we just adopt this uh, usual definition for this one form gauge transformation is wrong. Uh, actually, in addition to this uh, normal gauge transformation, we need to add a shift. So here I, I, I don't uh, write on this normal gauge transformation. So, so uh, you, you can do an additional normal gauge transformation for A mu anyway. But the point is that with this kind of a shift, actually you can cancel this additional contribution from this B by B term. Uh, then uh, uh, we end up with a uh, well-defined TPFT in terms of this uh, one form and two form gauge field. So, uh, uh, so 
now we can also uh, generalize this story to multiple components. So for the purpose of classification, we want to consider the most general multiple, compo uh, multiple component cases. But we also want to constrain our uh, classification just for bosonic uh, covering series or more general, some SPG phases. Uh, so the condition is that uh, um, we want to uh, uh, constrain the grounded degeneracy for this theory. And uh, uh, it turns out that without this kind of term, the ground state degeneracy is completely determined by the determinant of this uh, uh, k-matrix. So it's uh, pretty similar uh, to the 2 plus 1 case. So uh, basically, if we require this determinant equal to 1, uh, then it's uh, 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 kind of BF theory without any ground state degeneracy. But in 3 plus 1D, uh, if we impose this condition for determinant equal to 1, because uh, here we can do some individual uh, GLNZ transformation for this uh, two form and one form gauge field. And in the end, we can actually always uh, diagonalize this K matrix. So in the end, we can show that there's always exists some convention. You can just pick up a, a diagonal. So the, then in this convention, all this non trivial information, just uh, uh, you just put it here. Uh, OK, so uh, 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 without this kind of term, so the degenerate law depends on lambda, only depends on lambda. Yeah, yeah, I will explain that. So the uh, first uh, step is that we, uh, uh, we kind of uh, uh, ignore this term. And when we ignore this, this term, we know the ground degeneracy actually is 1. And then we ask the question, what happens if we uh, impose this additional term? But now uh, uh, I try to argue that if we only consider SPG phases, we can always uh, uh, make this term to be 0. Uh, if there is no additional symmetry protection, because the ground state degeneracy does not depend on this uh, symmetry, right? So uh, I, I try to talk, talk, uh, talk about uh, ground state degeneracy in the absence of symmetry first. Then I can completely remove this term and uh, uh, the ground state degeneracy just one. Then in the presence of uh, symmetry, then uh, for some cases, uh, this term must be non trivial but it, it will not change the ground state degeneracy. Um, so uh, for the general uh, multiple component theory, you can also define such kind of uh, gauge transformation. So this B mu field just transform in the normal way, but this uh, uh, A mu gauge field have uh, additional shift in addition to, to its own uh, uh, standard one form gauge, gauge, gauge transformation. Um, OK, so now we have a conclusion is that, uh, uh, for example, if we only impose U1 symmetry, it's easy to see this lambda term is uh, not quantized. Lambda can be anything. You can smoothly tune this lambda. Then uh, uh, it's easy to argue that uh, yeah, we can continue to tune this term to zero, and there's no any kind of interesting uh, SPT phase. But this is consistent with the uh, group cohomology or cobalism classification that with U1 symmetry only, uh, there could be nothing in 3 plus 1D. And then uh, next, we turn to the interesting question is that, is that uh, if we also impose time reversal symmetry, whether we can have something non trivial. Uh, then the uh, answer is pretty interesting because the time reversal symmetry actually can uh, uh, enforce some constraint for this lambda, and there is no smooth deformation. And once this term has no smooth deformation, uh, there is a chance to describe some non trivial uh, SPT phases. And particularly in this case, I want to consider this BTI phase. Uh, so uh, before uh, consider, consider this uh, uh, kind of constraint, I also want to uh, mention that uh, there's a natural uh, dimension reduction scheme in such kind of framework. Because in, in general, uh, we don't know um, what's the corresponding boundary theory for SPT phase. But uh, uh, in the presence of a BYGB term, actually it turns out there's a natural way. Because you can just uh, formally integral out this uh, uh, A mu gauge field, and it enforces the flat connection condition for the B two form gauge field. And then you can just uh, 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 solve this uh, two form gauge field as a derivative of some uh, one form gauge field. And then you can derive some boundary theory, basically it's a transcendence theory. So the claim is that uh, uh, for particular choice of lambda ij, we will end up with a surface transcendence theory uh, whose coefficient, uh, the k matrix, actually precisely is uh, uh, lambda ij. So, so in such kind of theory, we, we know there's a natural feature that uh, uh, there's a bulk and uh, boundary correspondence. 
Uh, and uh, um, also, um, Uh, not yet. Not yet. Well, wait, so then lambda is a level of a transaction, so then, then, then lambda must be quantized, right? It cannot be arbitrary. Uh, here I'm just talking about uh, this uh, general feature, yeah. So on the surface, uh, in what kind of sense you can interpret it as a transaction series, a tricky point. So we can discuss that later. But, but here I just uh, tell you that uh, uh, formally, if you do this uh, dimension reduction, you can you can just uh, get a, a lambda ig formally like a coefficient here as your k matrix. But uh, but uh, there's a, a very tricky issue of this uh, compactification, so it's not uh, quite like a transcendence theory. Uh, more precise, it's uh, it's actually it's like a, a half term. Yeah, it, it can take a, a general uh, real value. But uh, just in some particular case, you can uh, you can interpret it as uh, it has a transcendence. Yeah. Okay. Um, so now I also want to talk about this uh, compatibility uh, of the B field, and uh, which will introduce some uh, periodicity for this lambda, because this uh, B field is a kind of kind of flat connection, so it's kind of quantized if you integral over this uh, two-dimensional uh, manifold. It's, it's ju just like a, a one-form gauge field that you, you integral over some lines quantized, right? So it's uh, pretty similar. Uh, and now we can just uh, do uh, apply this quantization condition for this B-wide-B term. And uh, the final result is some tedious calculation, but uh, you, can, you can yeah go through detail later. Uh, it, the result is that this uh, shift lambda to lambda plus one so here I'm just talking about the uh, one component, but uh, this result is general for uh, multiple components. Uh, the theory remains invariant, so that's the uh, uh, first uh, uh, property of this uh, uh, BF2 plus BYDB theory. Uh, okay, so now we uh, try to impose uh, time reversal symmetry, because uh, although we have such kind of a shift, but if we just impose like a U1 symmetry, there's nothing interesting. Uh, although it's a shift, but it can take a continuum variable, so it still can connect to a trivial uh, uh, state. Uh, so if we in, uh, impose time reversal symmetry, uh, then there's uh, uh, slightly more tricky because uh, time reversal symmetry enforces this manifold must be non-orientable. So the simplest non-orientable manifold you can imagine is like a Mobius uh, uh, trip, uh, strip. So on this Mobius strip, if you integral this uh, one-form gauge field, uh, you find this correlation is actually just a half because uh, you need to uh, wind in twice to uh, get back. So it's very similar uh, to the correlation condition for this two-form gauge field. And uh, in the end, uh, you, the conclusion is that uh, in the presence of time reversal, and uh, we consider non-orientable manifold, uh, this uh, periodicity shift becomes uh, four, not uh, one. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, if you, uh, you just uh, uh, think about uh, the normal uh, uh, symmetry action of time reversal on the B field, you will find this BYDB term actually change the sign on the time reversal symmetry. It's pretty similar to this FYDF term. So with these two conditions together, the shift and this minus sign, then you can just simply conclude that uh, uh, all these components in lambda can only take the following value, uh, namely the diagonal just uh, zero or plus minus two and the off-diagonal just uh, uh, 0 plus minus 1, because uh, off-diagonal always, always counted by twice, right? So you get a half. So this is the final result of all these constraints that in the presence of uh, time reversal symmetry. OK, so, so now we can uh, uh, try to consider some trivial or non-trivial SPG phases uh, uh, on the time reversal symmetry. So the uh, first case is the two cases I want to consider is that uh, uh, so-called uh, some special trivial case. So the special trivial case one is just that you take this lambda to be a sigma x matrix. And in this case, uh, of course, this satisfy our uh, uh, other uh, uh, conditions we enforce. But it's still trivial because on the boundary, you can, you can, you can think about if you interpret this as a kind of a transcendence theory on the boundary, uh, it's just a no ground state degeneracy at, at all. It's a trivial disorder phase. So in this sense, it's trivial. And if we input this kind of uh, particular lambda matrix, we call the uh, E8 Kata matrix. It's also trivial. So 
this is put like a, a special trivial case. But we can also have some uh, slightly uh, interesting uh, trivial case. So we can consider this a very strange case. If we, for example, lambda equal to two, then um, if we uh, uh, apply this uh, type of assembly to lambda becomes minus two. And the two and the minus two correspond to different transcendent theory on the boundary. Uh, it's implied that on the boundary, actually, the symmetry is broken. So it's also corresponding to a trivial case. And also, we can consider some, uh, uh, some uh, more trivial case, like this uh, lambda take diagonal, like a 2 minus 2. Yeah, so in this case, it's not a, a broken symmetry on the boundary. It's also have topological order. But just this kind of uh, lambda matrix uh, is equivalent to this so-called double semi -on matrix in 2 plus 1, it can be realized in 2 plus 1 divide, uh, only. So it's also uh, not corresponding to any non-trivial phase. Uh, so finally, the conclusion is that uh, if we take uh, such kind of uh, uh, strange lambda matrix, it's called the SO8 level 1 Tata <coughs> matrix, um, then it's, uh, it's a non-trivial phase. Because in, in a purely 2 plus 1D system, such kind of K matrix will uh, break time reversal. And if you compute this uh, determinant of this uh, uh, lambda matrix, it's actually 4, which means it also has a topological order. So uh, in a purely 2 plus 1D system, it cannot be realized uh, without breaking time reversal. But uh, in the bulk, uh, um, we can show that uh, uh, due to the shift, because basically uh, uh, this uh, 2 go to minus 2, or 1 go to minus 2, one on the alpha diagonal, they are basically equivalent. So this term basically does not break any time of uh, symmetry. Uh, and uh, and uh, you, you can, on the other hand, you can also show that uh, uh, this uh, uh, lambda S O eight and the minus uh, lambda S O eight uh, in the in the bulk actually you can also design some uh, GL twelve D transformation to connect. Uh, the reason is that you kind of starting from this lambda S O eight and you add some uh, trivial block of this uh, uh, E eight Cartan matrix. So that's why we need a 12 by 12. And once adding this kind of things, then you can find a, a, a SL12 the transformation to transform to this minus. But uh, also plus some trivial block of this. So, so that's why this two trivial block is uh, useful to control this non-trivial SPD phases that prove their uh, invariance in the block. Is the lambda SO8 the time Sorry? Is the lambda SO8 uh, S08 level 1 is 4 by 4. Oh, but why is it 12? Oh, 12, because uh, if we want to show this uh, GL uh, uh, NZ equivalent uh, to plus lambda S08 and minus lambda S08, you need to enlarge it. Kind of, uh, you, you, you put, a, put a block, so you put uh, these two things together, and then you can find a GL 12 z transformation. You have this uh, lambda S08. And you also have this uh, special lambda T2. So another case we consider is that. Uh, six by six. Uh, or T2, sorry. Yeah, it's eight, so it's 12. And there are, there are a couple of sigma x, yeah. So, so these two things you can, you can transform by GL to the 12z. So, 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 so in the box, it's uh, um, uh, 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 they are equivalent zero. But, uh, but, uh, but uh, it's easy to argue that, uh, that uh, uh, it cannot be realized uh, purely in 2 plus 1D. So, so therefore, uh, we finally find a non-trivial uh, uh, 3 plus 1D SPG phases. And uh, the surface theory actually is consistent with the uh, uh, Santos uh, conjecture uh, previously. Okay. The topology in the bulk is just lambda SO8. The bulk is non degenerate. Um, yeah, so that's my uh, statement uh, previously because uh, in the book, the argument is that as long as this K matrix the determinant is trivial, it's non-degenerate. Why, why, why is that? Uh, because uh, you can, if we think about the SPT, it, once it's degeneracy, it's independent on the symmetry. You can always think about the first uh, uh, add perturbation uh, break the symmetry, you can completely remove this lambda term. No, then we will know how to compute this. No, if the degeneracy is from symmetry breaking, then uh, degeneracy comes from spontaneous symmetry breaking, then uh, but, uh, but I think uh, uh, it's reasonable to argue that this term will not uh, introduce symmetry breaking. Right? Yeah. Um, uh